Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Gray. My name is Kylie, and yeah, so this is a different type of episode. Today, I, I thought I'd do a series because I'm learning myself how to use raw milk, and I thought it'd be an interesting series to make on my channel on how I'm teaching myself how to make raw milk. I'm just by following recipes, YouTube videos, and whatnot, trying to use it all because we are getting a ton of milk and it is becoming a necessity to start finding other ways to use it besides just drinking it. Today I'm gonna do instant pot yogurt. Okay, so there's two things. One, I don't love the runny yogurt that I have seen a lot of raw milk yogurt look like. It's runny and I will not eat that. I know for a fact my kids may especially if it's in a smoothie. I would even probably eat it in a smoothie, but I would not choose to eat runny yogurt. And I know for a fact, my husband Trey will definitely not eat that. Um, the goal is I'd like to make Greek yogurt and the starter culture I got is Greek yogurt. So we are going to be um, combining two recipes, which could totally be a faux pas, but I found a gal on Google traditionalcookingschool.com. I have never heard of her. I don't know anything about her, but she did a instant pot yogurt recipe and it's pretty simple. And I have a gallon of milk that is not super fresh. Let's get this going. <clears throat> Shake it all up and get it in the instant pot. Oh, there's no smell at all. It's not quite a week old yet, so it's not as fresh at all. This is what they say you want to use. Ugh, gotta shake it. Want to use, kind of use it up. Now raw milk, I have learned, doesn't go uh, rotten. It goes sour. So I didn't know that. So when you open up raw milk, I used to be like, oh, that's rotten. Get rid of it. Give it to the pigs. Give it to the chickens. But come to find out, it just sours. And that's when you can do a lot of good things. Oh, it's starting to snow. It's just a little bit. And you can do a lot of cool things. Obviously sour cream, cheeses, and all the things. Yeah. For cleaning out your jars, I find it best to, once you use them, clean them out with hot soapy water right away because then the cream just dissolves that's stuck in there. Okay, so for this I have Greek starter and it's from Cultures for Health. And then I have some beef gelatin powder and this is just to help it congeal so you don't get super runny yogurt which is exactly what i do not want to eat this recipe calls for two and a half tablespoons to sprinkle on top two Press yogurt button and press it just uh. There's no adjust! I don't know what this means! <laughs> oh no! I don't know what to do. Have no fear. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah! Just push the yogurt button twice. If you don't have an action button, boil button twice. No, yogurt button twice. Okay, so now I'm boiling, yo. Okay, not only am I new to making uh, dairy products, I'm also new to using an instant pot. I can make rice and soup and uh, meats. That's it. It already looks like it's doing something gelatin -ing. Okay, adjust boil while stirring constantly. Oh dear. Let the milk melt, heat up enough to melt the gelatin. You can tell when there's ready when there's no more gelatin flakes. Gelatin flakes? Um, I don't see any gelatin flakes. Okay. Ah, crap. I was only supposed to add a couple cups of milk um, and then I was supposed to add the rest. Well, too bad, so sad. That's not happening. 
I could have just jacked this up. This is why this is a teaching myself how to do this. Next time, this is going to take forever to heat up this milk. Okay. You do you. Okay, I am running into some problems. <laughs> Alright, so it, the Cultures for Health recipe calls for a quart of milk. A packet of this. The recipe I'm finding online is calling for 1 64th of a teaspoon. What? And they apparently have mini teaspoons that you can buy. When in life am I going to need 1 64th of a teaspoon? Apparently today. Um, how bad is this going to be? Not sure yet, guys. So, we're going to put this entire packet in. And I feel like one, this is like at least a teaspoon in here. And they want 1 64th a teaspoon. They want this whole packet for a quart, but I have a gallon in there. So, this is a lot of math issues. Okay. You, so they say in math class that you won't, that you need all these things. Okay, what I have come to be true of what I need on the regular is fractions. How to do basic arithmetic. Adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, and fractions. That is what I have found most useful in day-to-day -day life. I'm sure, obviously, if you are in a math profession, other things would come in handy, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, while we're waiting for this, while we're waiting for this, this obviously is my first bout in making yogurt. They recommend on most every article I've read is having an extra insert in your Instant Pot to be able to like switch it out if you use it all the time. And I think that to be true, if you need your Instant Pot, tonight for dinner or something like that. Uh, I do not need my Instant Pot tonight for dinner. So it should be okay and it sits for 24 hours in there. So if you want to spend the money to do that, I have so much kitchen things. I am not a minimalist by any means and I do not want to be a minimalist <laughs> by any means. I like my things. Now, try not to be a hoarder is the other part of that. And there are some things and uh, I could use help with organization and things, but I don't want to be a minimalist. I like having things when I want them. And I, and if it's a kitchen thing, I tend to use most of the kitchen things because I tend to make a lot of things in my house. So the kitchen things, I was just actually watching an, an episode of Jess over at Roots and Refuge and she ha is making these pipe shelving and they've done this for years in their other house. I think we could really benefit from some pipe shelving. I have these these things on for my pans. You can tell where the kids can reach to put things away. And I like those, but I also think that pipe shelving would come in handy, maybe behind me. I don't know. And just, we need some more shelving spaces. And she was talking about the exact same thing I'm going through. This is why she's relatable. You have so many things. You have canners, you have dehydrators, you have water bath canner, pressure canner, dehydrator, roaster oven. All these things start piling up and you use them on the regular. And if you have a cow or goats or dairy animals of any sort, you start accumulating more things. Um, milk buckets. I have four. Well, my fourth one comes today. And you, these things start to start coming. Milk buckets, milk jars, milk jugs, strainers, filters. All the things start accumulating. And you need them because you have it. You need more than the normal person who doesn't have a dairy cow. Or dairy goat. Or whatever dairy animal you can. Sheep. Camels. You know. People do those things. So... The moral of the story is I need more shelving. I like my kitchen stuff. I have so many cast iron pans, but I love them all and I never want to part with them. And you know what? They come in handy. They are so handy. You can bake, you can cook on your wood stove, if the power goes out, you can do all the things, which I love. So, all right, it is all going. And now we're gonna put in my starter. Stir that in, put the lid on. 
Oh yeah, baby. It says like when you're doing the Instant Pot to make sure your thing is flipped to the seal position. Mine is a newer one. Well, not that new, like last year model. And a lot of the manual things that they used to do in the early ones, mine doesn't ask for. And so it already does that automatically. You want it on yogurt and on the normal setting. So this is gonna go. Okay, it says to do a minimum of six to eight hours and then 24 hours if you're like on the minimum of 24 hours if you're on the GAPS diet, which is for special, it's a very particular diet. Okay, and then you just let it go. I After it's done in the Instant Pot, it goes in the fridge for at least 24 hours. So this won't be done till tomorrow evening. Good Lord, it's quite the process. So hopefully it's done tomorrow and we can taste test it and it will be delicious, which yeah, hopefully. All right, it is the following day, and it is evening, and huh, I'll let you look for yourself. I pulled this out of the fridge. Um, it is, I can't get a, there's shadows. There's some gloppy gloops. It smells really good. It smells like good yo Greek yogurt. Um, not the consistency at all of Greek yogurt. Um, not consist. This is the exact runny thing. Um, this is the exact runny thing I was avoiding. I didn't want to have runny yogurt like this, but it is what it is. And now I think this will be really good in smoothies. And I'm going to do two more experiments. I'm going to save a little bit of this yogurt to use it as a starter in my next batch. And then also I'm going to follow the directions on the next one better. Like I'm going to do the directions of what Cultures for Health recommend on their packet and see about that. This is what you get for not following directions to a tea, people. But it smells good and we made yogurt and yeah, so that's that. Well, I'm gonna go out. We're gonna go out and milk and this is going to be part of the series is we're just gonna be doing daily life for these milk series videos. In the beginning, you will see the milk and the second half, we'll be doing our animal chores. Something that's going on right now is my oldest son is learning how to milk. He is 10 and a half and has a real interest in it and Mia's been doing really well with him. So we'll go out and we'll milk. So let's go. I'm gonna take you out to the ice rink, um, which is, it's on the struggle bus. So I use a very cheap method of using logs and just plastic. <sighs> okay, so the other day, it was filling up. Oh, it looks good out here. And then you come down this way and it gets thin. Okay, I was out here the other day by myself and I'm down here fixing. It was like a little trickle of water trickling out. So I'm out here, of course, right before bed in the dark and I'm in my robe and all of a sudden, this thing was here, the plastic, and it was just like, whoosh, all the water started coming out at me. And I have evidence. My family, when I was telling them the story, they were making fun of me because they were like, yeah, right, Kai. I'm sure it was like a tidal wave. And they just, they were on a roll, cracking jokes at me. This is my parents, my sister and brother-in-law, even my own husband. But I was like, guys, I was out here with some slip-on shoes in the freezing cold and the water came gushing out at me and it about took me out. So it came out here and went, you can see the gush of the river. That's right. And the water came a gushing out. Guys, it was crazy. And the ice rink was filled almost up and since then my hose has been frozen, which I haven't taken it in. It was filled to about here. Probably where the hose is. And there's the edge. Okay, and now look at where it's at. It was a crazy gush of water. So our weather has since changed. We were concerned that we weren't gonna get any cold weather. <laughs> it was, I know it was still early, but like, hi Marsha, of course. 
we were, it was like, where's the cold weather? Where's the snow? Where's anything? I, my sister and I were talking and I think we had more frost in July than we had in November. We could be exaggerating, but I don't think we're exaggerating by much. It was that warm in November. We woke up in the whole, we had a whole blanket of snow. And you can see a little bit, but it got pretty warm, so it melted that. But we're actually under a winter storm warning for tomorrow, which is nice because we need some snow. The mountains need some snow. I'm starting to feel like that town on White Christmas when they had no snow. We have a big ski tourist area on a mount, the mountain here, and we needed snow. Mount Bachelor needed snow, and it's getting pounded between yesterday and tomorrow and this whole weekend. So we have a winter storm warning through Sunday and then looks like we still have more snow next week. So that is a win and a major praise report. All right, let's go milk the cow. How's it going milking the cow, El? Good. Has it been more difficult than you thought? Sorta. Of. Sorta, of. but you, he's learning really fast. She locked it? You go a little further in. Should be good. This way. She'll just naturally get over. Where's the uh I'll do the questions. I got my gloves on. Uh, Alright, dude. You want me to start or do you just want to go? I'll go. Okay. Okay, go for it. You let me know if you get scared or if you want to take a break. Okay? Okay. Now watch her hind leg. Or you can rest your head. Yeah, rest your head on her. Then you can feel her when she moves, right? Mm -hmm. Good job. Good reflexes. Good job. You're doing very good, Al. Thanks. Hang my jacket up somewhere. There's a nail over there. Could I try it now again? You wanna go again? Okay, mm -hmm. look at me. Remove the bucket. That way, she, if she moves and accidentally kicks it over, you still get milk. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, just talk to her. Warm up. Are your hands cold? Okay, just, you can go. Warm up. You want somebody touching your nipples with cold hands? No. Right. She doesn't either. So we just got done milking. El did really great. He milked probably over a gallon. We are still, we're still calf sharing and not separating and not separating at night. Uh, and we're still getting over a gallon every milking. And I'm good with that. We will transition very soon. We will transition very soon to separating our calf and in the next couple weeks. And then we will do morning milkings instead of evening milkings and go from it. It has been really nice to teach my son to help milk and just to help strain the milk. And it doesn't always go perfectly. Sometimes there is spilled milk. That's okay. It's nice having another set of hands being able to know what to do. If I get sick or whatever reason and we need the cow milked, Elle can at least teach Trey the basics to help me out. <laughs> But that's why we are calf sharing and so that way we don't have to rely on. So since my last, this is a, a lot of you are probably watching this and thinking, why would she let her little boy milk the cow when one of the last videos we saw was that cow trying to kick her? True. 
But that video was filmed over a month ago. And since then, that video was the last time that she kicked it all. So, we, she, oh, the pigs, they are just so noisy and up in my business. This is Mama Pig, Pepper Potts. So, she hasn't kicked me or the bucket. She's, the bucket she used to hate, she now just doesn't give a rip. Uh, if it's just me in here, I don't even put her head in the stanchion. I just put the grain bucket right here and I just sit beside her and milk her. She just doesn't move. I think I caught it on film. A pig came up going crazy and she didn't budge. She didn't budge. She's, I wouldn't necessarily say she, they call it in the her, horse world, I don't know what they call it. Maybe it's the same in the cow world, it's bomb proof. Like, in horses and in cows, are horses like they, people will purposely rattle tin or make all these crazy noises to make sure the horses don't spook so easily. Some horses spook too easy and it's dangerous. So you wanna kinda bomb proof your horse. Same with cows. And I feel like that was the benefit of getting Mia when she was such a little thing. Is that she was raised around all these crazy, not the pigs, but she was raised around us and my children and <laughs> all of the wild noises that go on here. Chickens, goats. Now she's getting accustomed to the pigs, which are the noisiest animals ever. So it's been, it took a while for me to gain, her to gain my trust to let her be milked by a kid of mine. And she's been milked by two of my kids. So she has now earned the right and the privilege, well the privilege, to be milked by a child of mine. Because she just has come a very, very long way. And that's all from consistent milking and not giving up when she's been naughty. And also, we didn't, I didn't use any hobbles or bar, they have like these bars that keep them from kicking or feet tying. I didn't do any of that, which I could have been a little crazy, but I persevered and only got kicked a couple times and it wasn't too bad. And the worst kick of all was from last year. This year, I didn't get a bruise from any of her kicks, which is good. But I wasn't, I was never gonna put my kid in that situation where I thought, and even now, I have my grip on, <laughs> for the first few times, first, Elle's milks like four times now. And for the first like couple days he was milking, I'm always right there. I never pay attention to this camera. This is the first time I brought it out in the week he's been milking. And well, he started milking last week for a few days and a few days this week. I never pay attention to this. I completely focus in on what he's doing. And for the first few days, I had my hand on the back of him so I could, <laughs> you know, sucker mom him if I had to grab him out of the way. And it really helps if you like lean your head on the cow. You can feel, not only is it relaxing because your head is supported and it just like you're kind of bonding with your cow, but you can also feel any type of shift or movement she does do and then it gives you an extra level of protection to get out of the way hi suk suki is almost the age that we brought mia home so it's fun to see she's just a mia clone that's exactly what mia looked like when we brought her home all right guys so i think we'll call it a wrap yogurt smells really good i'm anxious to try it um well not really try it in a normal way hmm but try it in a smoothie. <laughs> Cause I am not eating that straight up. This is milk cow realities. I'm working through the kinks. I The only other thing I've made from my milk besides I have like some chocolate sauce, I did chocolate milk for the kids, is I last year I made cream cheese and I think I let it hang too long and all the, the is it the whey if it's, I think it's whey. Uh, came out and it was a little too dry. I used it in soup and it was fine, but a little dry. So I really want to perfect this yogurt recipe and I really want to not have to use starter culture every single time I go and make yogurt. So I'd like to save my own yogurt and we fly through yogurt enough where, yeah. All right guys, well I will catch you on my next video and I hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas season and just make sure you are I just want to, just a reminder, is that this is a special time of year and not to get bogged down with the hustle and bustle of it all and distract you from what is really important. 
So thank you all for following along. Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It really is an encouragement to us here and an encouragement for YouTube to push out our videos. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.